Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. This is a devotional word for August 31st, 2024, out of the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, the Apostle Paul is answering questions about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in the Gospel of John that when the Holy Spirit came into the life of a Christian, he would teach them, he would lead them, he would counsel them. He would also... Uh, work in their lives so as to bring glory to Christ. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the blessing uh, of, the, of the body of Christ and for the work of God in the kingdom of God and in the world, both with Christians and non-Christians. But the Holy Spirit will always glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit will always work in a person's life so, so as to uh, manifest the true heart and the true nature of Jesus Christ. It's not to bring glory to a person or to bring glory to a church or anything else other than glorifying Christ and secondarily bringing blessings to people. So especially now with the gift of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit, excuse me, within the church, uh, those are given to each individual person within the church to bless the church, to build up the church. So a quick look here, Romans... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 4, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Paul says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. So, multiplicity of different kinds of gifts, he's going to talk about that in a moment, but they all come from the Holy Spirit. So, if you have one gift and I have another kind of gift, both of those gifts were given to you and I respectively, but from the third person of the triune Godhead, the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. This seems to point to different offices or callings or kind of functions within the church. I would say a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, somebody who's a deacon, uh, somebody who has the gift of helps. They have a certain kind of service uh, that they function with either in the church or outside of the church. Verse 6, there are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. This would point to, for instance, perhaps one person has a gift of evangelism and he's really good one-on-one, -on -one, but he would never be like a Billy Graham to speak in a stadium. Billy Graham obviously had the gift of evangelism and the person in the pew might have the gift of evangelism, but there's different manifestations of those gifts. New Living Translation says there's different kinds of working. But in all of them and in everyone, it is the same work of God's soul. So nobody can take credit. Uh, if somebody gives me $20,000 and they give you $20, both of those are gifts. I shouldn't brag that I have $20,000. I was just received the gift just like you did. It's that kind of idea. So Holy Spirit gives gifts to each person within the body of Christ for the benefit of the church. Verse 7. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To each one. If you're a Christian, you've received gifts from God. You've received gifts from the Holy Spirit for the common good. And when those gifts are manifested, it's for the common good. For instance, somebody might have a gift of evangelism. How would we know that? When that gift is manifested, when they find themselves talking to someone and suddenly they're bringing uh, the gospel message in an incredible way. How do you know if somebody has the gift of helps you know, 10 people are kind of sitting sitting in a circle. The, the work person with the gift of helps, they look around and they notice something that needs to be done and they get to it. It's manifested. The gift of teaching, whatever the gift might be, it's for the common good. Verse 8, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. So the wisdom is the right application of knowledge. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. The Apostle Paul seems to be speaking here about beyond human knowledge that you might get out of an encyclopedia or watching a do-it-yourself video on YouTube. That's knowledge. But he's talking about, I believe, words of knowledge, whereby information is uh, given to a person via the Holy Spirit, apart from that person gathering the information or being able to witness it or anything else. It's just an, uh, kind of a, an influence upon the soul of a person to have that knowledge. So they have that knowledge. But what do you do with that knowledge? Well, you need the gift of wisdom. So Paul says, uh, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. 
to another a message of knowledge by the same Spirit. So it's great to have some knowledge, but if God gives you knowledge, pray that you would also have wisdom. I believe that sometimes God shows people something, not so that they can do something externally, but so that they can pray about it. Other times, may, may they have the gift of wisdom to know what to do. Verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit. The Bible says every Christian is saved by faith, but sometimes people are given extraordinary measures of faith. Think about the Apostle Peter when Jesus said, uh, Peter, step out of the boat. Peter said, Lord, is it you? He saw Jesus walking in the water. He said, yeah, it is. If it's, if it's you, tell me to step out of the boat. And, and Jesus said, come. Peter had an extraordinary uh, burst, if you will, of faith, a spiritual gift. Verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. Gifts. There are moments when the Holy Spirit will inspire somebody to pray for somebody. It's a moment when God is going to do divine healing. I don't believe a person can go around healing people all the time. There has to be a gifting for it. And uh, I believe it's kind of is appropriate for the moment as God would lead. To another miraculous powers that could cover the gifts of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the word of faith. It could cover a number of things. To another prophecy. Prophecy is speaking forth the word of God and or speaking in a foretelling kind of predictive kind of way. I believe the gift of prophecy is often present with men who are in the pulpit or women who are teaching women. They receive a real divine revelation for that moment to bring forth the word of God. To another, distinguishing between spirits, to have a, an internal gut check that somebody isn't who they say they are and you discern that there's something wrong with that person and uh, God's showing you to have some caution about a certain person. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, still to another, the interpretation of tongues. We'll get to that when we get to chapter 14 and two more videos. Uh, I believe tongues is not a proof of salvation. Not everybody speaks in tongues. Uh, sadly, some churches use that as a proof sign that somebody is saved, and there's a lot of pressure to kind of fake it. Not everybody speaks in tongues, but when you do speak in tongues, I believe you're speaking to God, not to men. We'll see that in 1 Corinthians 14. And to a, another, the interpretation of tongues. To interpret that language, which is unknown to the human audience, to interpret it and to make sense of it for the listeners that are standing nearby. Verse 11, all these, uh, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. It all comes from the Spirit of God. Remember, it's to glorify Christ and also to edify people and to reach out to the unsaved. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. He distributes, distributes them to each one. If you're a Christian, you have gifts. Pray that God will show you what they are. He distributes them to each one just as he determines. We want to recognize the sovereignty of God in the distribution of spiritual gifts. So more coming on that as we move forward through 1 Corinthians. Thanks for watching.